Now, that Thank also means much, I, I, I have to bring you in, lawyer Pierre Dankwa. So this sort of communication from the finance minister also have great implications for the bondholders, certainly. And what clearly are the implications in terms of whether the government has empathy for them and then also seems to suggest externally when they go to the road shows and also in international media that everything is fine? Uh, uh, so uh, I'm surprised you are concerned about empathy here where really the issue that Ghana is faced with is a fundamental loss of economic credibility. A fundamental loss of economic credibility because of the irresponsible nature Anado's government has managed our economy. You understand? And the finance minister here is making an Alistair Campbell ex type of... Alistair Campbell. Yeah, you're, you're not Alistair Campbell. That's, 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 that's yeah, a yeah, serious this is, yeah, 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 doctor. Yeah, because what... So, you see, the finance minister right now has become the chief propagandist. Because, you see, what the issue really is, is that because of this debt exchange, people who had confidence in the economy of this country have lost 12 billion. Economy 101 tells us that the safest place to place your money is in government bonds. That's, 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 that's fundamental. In government instruments. That's fundamental. Ghana has established that that principle has an exception. And that exception is where you decide to place your money or where you decide to buy government of Ghana's instruments. So right now, beyond people losing their monies, Ghana has suffered a fundamental loss of economic credibility. Nobody will believe in placing money in Ghana. Investors have lost confidence in this country. Now, my brother, my, my former deputy uh, director of communication. I'm still, I'm still deputy. As I said, my former party. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm okay. no longer a member of your party. I no more. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. Okay, I've okay, left. Okay. I've left your party. I know uh, one day you use the word irresponsible. A very, very irresponsible. Ah, address. Yeah, address. because so go to Article 36 of our constitution when it comes to the directive principles of state policy. Now, if you read Article 36, and with your permission, no. let me read. Now, Article 36 to B. Now, he said that the state shall, in particular, take all necessary steps to establish a sound and healthy economy whose underlying principles shall include affording, affording ample opportunity for individual initiative and creativity in economic activities and fostering an enabling environment for a pronounced role of the private, private, private sector in the economy. Now, we all know that in creating that right economic environment, then you need to manage your your debt, how you handle debt. Because, see, what debt, irresponsible procuring of debt does is that it cows out the private sector. Now, you you, you, you broke down uh, the, the, the institutions that, 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 that took part in the DDP. When well, you were alarmed that our commercial banks, <clears throat> about 30-something percent of all the monies that, were ex that, that, that came from our, our commercial banks. Now, we, we, we are saying, as a people, that one of the underlying principles that should govern our economic objective is that, listen, private sector should take a pronounced role. How is private sector going to take a pronounced role if government is sweeping all the money from the com commercial banks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if government, who is supposed to create that enable, en enabling environment, is crowding out the private sector, and what do they use those mon monies for? Nanado came on the back of transforming the economy of this country came out with a beautiful 1D, 1F program. How much money did he invest there? Because we all know that show me where you place your money at and we'll show your commitment. So you give 1D, 1F just 400 million Ghana cities. You spend 5 billion on NAPCO. You understand? I don't need to rehash the other expenditure because I think AADG has done a good job at that. Yeah, you understand? But you borrow and you use it to con as for consumption. You go and borrow money and you, those, you don't use those monies in the productive sectors. You understand? And then you get to a stage where, because of your irresponsibility, because every year since 2017, we've always had deficit, fiscal deficit. One of the abominations of your monetary policy, because when you, when you understand what an economy is, an economy simply is the state of any nation in terms of its production and consumption of goods and services and the supply of money 
And you know that government controls that supply of money through the use of this fiscal policy and monetary policy. And one of the abominations of monetary policy is what we call a, a, a monetary financing, where Bank of Ghana finances your your uh, your debt and your fiscal. Now, uh, uh, is it not the case that under this regime, Bank of Ghana cannot account for over 60 billion Ghana cities? So we are talking about inflation, the 55, he himself mentioned it. Who caused them? Who caused them? If Bank of Ghana cannot account for over 60 billion, as I to put it in simple terms, 60 billion. Mm -hmm. You have to put it in simple, in, in, in simple terms. So you've, you've managed the economy irresponsibly. Even where it was so clear that the economy was sinking because of your fiscal irresponsibility, you are refusing to go to IMF. We won't go to IMF today, we won't go to IMF tomorrow. Arrogance. Who said that? We won't go to IMF today, we won't go to IMF tomorrow. And then you, are on, you go and then you have the opportunity of talking to the world. And you want to gloat on your failure. You are gloating. You want to become Alistair Campbell and gloat on your fundamental failure where you've stolen 12 billion from people who believed in that principle that said that the safest place to place your monies is in government instruments you breach the fundamental principle you breached it and you want to go to write it so go for it you understand and, and I, 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 I keep i keep people saying this one of the fundamental problems the next government whoever it may be whether it's alan chemantin whether it's drama whether you know likely even that Bahama, Bah Bahama himself becomes president whoever you have a fundamental problem to to deal with concerning the credibility of the economy of ghana uh, what is the fdi st stakes now ghana's fdi has reduced from 3.28 billion in 2017 to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to about 600 million dollars investors don't trust in this country so you see Roland. Yeah, so, so, uh, so uh, to end the minister should not concern himself with propaganda he has a job to do and that job is in which way can you raise the credibility of our economy and these statements these propagandist statements plunge us further in that lack of credibility quagma okay